Hello and welcome to BSS Sulfuric Acid Catalyst um, webinar. My name is Dick Hensel. I'm the Global Marketing and Technology Manager for the Sulfuric Acid Catalyst and I have around about 20 years of experience with BSF. I started my career in R&D and since 10 years I'm now responsible for uh, marketing, especially for the Sulfuric Acid Catalysts. Uh, in this webinar, I would like to introduce to you the sulfuric acid catalyst history of BSF. I would like to talk about the catalyst reaction mechanism and the technology, introduce to you the catalyst portfolio and selection criteria, and especially I would like to show you the new catalyst development BSF has, which is named Quattro. The quattro shaped catalyst is a new invention and this is a very nice catalyst which helps you to improve your catalyst performance, decrease conversion rates and uh, decrease the screening losses of your plants. Okay, let's start with uh, some history of BSF. So BSF has more than 150 years of uh, experience with sulfuric acid and also with sulfuric acid catalyst. In 1865, ESF was founded and only three years later, uh, we started our first own sulfuric acid, catalyst, uh, sulfuric acid production in Ludwigshafen. So we do not only have experience on the catalyst, also in the production technology of the sulfuric acid. In 1913, we granted the sulfuric acid catalyst patent based on the vanadium pentoxide. Here on the right hand side, you can see the, the patent yeah, granted. And uh, all these catalysts you have still, still up today on the market are based on this patent. Yeah? So all the vanadium based catalysts are based on this. A catalyst patent which is patented by BSF. In 1914, our sulfuric acid catalyst production reached 120,000 tons per year already. Yeah? And here on the left hand side, you see some pictures of uh, BSF in the past, where uh, here you see the River Rhine, it was quite a small unit. Uh, here the production of the catalysts, yeah, and yeah, this is from, from the older days, but still here you see the chimney of the sulfuric acid catalyst, uh, the sulfuric acid production. On the next slide, you see a shift to the newer days. In 2010, we introduced a new high performance season promoted catalyst. Uh, which is named O4116. It's a high performance catalyst which uh, operates at really low temperatures and uh, helps you a lot in terms of uh, emission reduction. And in 2016, we introduced a new, uh, a completely new catalyst shape. So it's the quattro shape. You see it here on the right hand side. I will talk in more details about this later. And this is really a step change in, in terms of uh, sulfuric acid catalyst. Uh, it provides a lot of advantages I will explain later on. 2018, we started up our sulfuric acid catalyst production in China. So we have now two production sites for sulfuric acid catalyst to serve uh, your, your needs uh, in, in all regions much faster than before and we increased also the capacity and which helps you to get catalyst much faster from BSF. In 2020, we introduced a new catalyst, uh, also new catalysts um, 04110 and 04111 as Quattro. So we, we are now able to uh, have the full portfolio also in the Quattro shape. This is what something our customers really ask for, and now we are able to serve you also for vanadium type catalysts uh, in quattro shape. Yeah. We have more than 350 references worldwide in various technologies. So for sulfur burning units, metallurgical units, um, wet sulfuric acid units, smelter units, and so on. And over the years, we patented more than 
20, uh, we granted more than 20 patents on the social health catalyst. So in this picture, you can see the, how BSF uh, yeah, headquarter looks today. So all this in, in the red line is the BSF Verbund standort. It's called Verbund. Um, it's a fully integrated uh, um, yeah, production site, so it, which uh, gains uh, high efficiency in, in, in general. So here on, on this side, you see the catalyst production, where also the sulfuric acid catalyst will be produced. So we do not only produce sulfuric acid catalyst, also other types. Here on, on this complex, we have four sulfuric acid units. Yeah? And in addition to these four production units in Ludwigshafen, we also have uh, one production site in uh, sulfuric acid production in Antwerp in Belgium and one in uh, US. And all the, uh, the sulfuric acid which is produced here in this complex is used internally. So we do not sell sulfuric acid, we use it for our internal processes. Okay, coming now to the reaction mechanism. Um, here you see the equation. It's, yeah, it looks quite simple. So it's SO2 plus oxygen reacts to SO3. Here you see it's a higher exothermic reaction. And on, on the arrow which goes back, you can see that's an equilibrium uh, reaction. So on, on this scale, you see the conversion rate and here the temperature. And the blue line is the uh, equilibrium which you cannot, uh, yeah, you cannot go beyond this point yeah, because at a certain concentration range between SO2 and SO3 and temperature, the backward reaction is equal to the forward reaction. So at a certain point, you are reaching close to the equilibrium and then the reaction stops. And that is the, the reason why we have uh, such a configuration for um, production processes. We also have, for example, here bed number one. You start at a certain temperature for example, 420 degrees, reaction starts, temperature goes up and conversion goes up. Then you need to cool down the gas because you reach close to the equilibrium. Here with this, this means it's a, a heat exchanger. Okay, the gas goes out, which will be cooled down. Then second bed also temperature increase due to the fact that uh, you have an exothermic reaction, the same for the bed number three and bed number four. Yeah. So, and this is called a single, absor a, a single absorption reaction, yeah. Because you have a final absorption tower. Um, with this reaction process, you can reach uh, conversion rates up to uh, 90, 98, 98.5%. But you also have uh, another type of reactors, which is called double absorption reactions. Yeah, you have an intermediate absorption tower, and uh, it, it works like this. This intermediate absorption tower extracts all the SO3 from the process gas, and so the equilibrium will be shifted. This is the equilibrium curve of the single absorption unit, and by using a double absorption unit, you can shift the equilibrium curve upwards, which means that you will have after that number four uh, conversion rates of 99.9% .9 approximately, up to 99.9% .9 depending on your process. Uh, for example, in Ludwigshafen, we operate at um, inlet gas concentrations of 11% approximately of SO2, and after the final absorption tower, we have uh, emission level of 30 to 40 ppm, which is, is really, really low by using ESF catalyst for sure. Okay, so coming now to the catalyst shapes a little bit. So by um, using the example of M on M's, yeah, this is a little bit simplified. You can see if you have a catalyst which is really big, big m &Ms, you will have a low pressure drop because the gas flows through these uh, 
ja, bad, ja, with um, yeah, high bed porosity, low pack packing density, but you also have a low surface area due to the fact that the M&Ms are so big or the catalyst is so big. Yeah, and this leads to a low conversion. On the other hand, you have the option that you could use small M&Ms. So you have high pressure drop due to the fact that you have a high packing density. Um, you have a low bed porosity and a high, a high surface area. So this leads to a high conversion. And we as PSF are looking for the optimum. So we, looking, we are looking for a low pressure drop and a high conversion. But you can see by comparing these two M&Ms, it's not easy to, to find a nice balance. So, conclusion is we need more complex shapes. So, then here we have the current challenges in the sulfuric acid catalysts. So, first is the shape, as I explained. Yeah? We have the pressure drop and the geometric surface area, which works against each other. We have the carrier, yeah? which gives you accessibility of the active size. Yeah? So, for example, you have a, a carrier material which has really big pores, so the accessibility of the gas into the pores is quite easy, but on the other hand, the catalyst is very soft. Yeah? So either you have high accessibilities or you have a good mechanical strength, because if you have a carrier material which has only very small pores, it's much harder. Yeah? And so our R&D colleagues try to find the best balance between these two. And Last but not least, we have the active compounds. So we have vanadium and also other alkali, um, alkali sulfates yeah? and other promoters. Yeah? So the mixture of the active compound is also very important. And all these three also work together. So, so we need to find really a very good balance between the shape, the carrier material, and the active compound. So, and what we now found is that we have uh, in our portfolio very hard catalysts with a very good active surface area and mechanical stability. This is something which is really important. Yeah. So, our portfolio looks like this. So, we have first here big rings. We call it dust protection layer. This is a catalyst which is used mainly in the first bed if you, and um, this is mostly for the customers which need a catalyst which is um, yeah, very durable and does not um, provide a high pressure drop increase due to impurities in the feed gas. So if you have some, some sulfur source which is not very pure, you most likely face some issues with, with dust. Yeah, so the dust comes into the bed number one and blocks the first bed. And this leads to a high pressure drop and you need to do a shutdown and replace maybe the first layer and put another catalyst type on top. And this is a time for outage, uh, which costs you a lot of money. By using this big rings, um, you still have, due to the fact that you have uh, space in between, even if they catch the dust, you have enough space in between to extend your time in operation. So with a layer of 10 to 15 centimeters of these big rings, you can extend your time in operation for six to 12 months, depending on your process. Coming now to the, to the standard shapes, I would say, for the bed, also bed number one, up to bed number four. Here we have the ring shape catalyst. This is more uh, to, for customers which uh, require a little bit higher pressure drop due to the converter geometry. We offer this in, in vanadium and in cesium type. Then we have our mostly used catalyst, which is uh, the 0 for 110, 11, 15, and 16 star ring. This type provides a lower pressure drop and a slightly higher exit surface area. But our, our newest invention is this year. So we have uh, the OFO 115 quad four since 2016 and OFO 110 and 11 quad four since 
this year in our portfolio. Uh, so this new type provides really a tremendously higher active surface area in, com in comparison with the even higher hardness of the cattle. And another advantage of the, of the quadro shapes is the operation temperature. For example, you see here the operation range of, of our catalysts. Again, over 110 and over 111 are vanadium-based catalysts. They have operation range of 420 to 630 degrees. The over 111, which is mostly used in bed number three to four, or bed number three to five, uh, two to five, uh, over one, uh, with, and the temperature range of this is 410 to 600 degrees. The over 110 is mostly used in the first bed. And here we have a very robust catalyst which is able to operate up to temperatures of 630 degrees, for peaks also 650 degrees. Yeah. So this is a really robust and hard catalyst which could stand the hard situations in the bed number one. And for the other beds, we usually use the OFO 111. For the Quattro, we, we found that the operation temperature is even broader. So you can operate 10 degrees lower, uh, starts with the operation 10 degrees lower for the OFO 110 and for the OFO 111. So you can also operate at 400 degrees without an issue for the OFO 111 and 410 degrees for the O4110, which is, is really a tremendous depth change, um, for it, especially if you operate uh, a metallurgical unit which has frequent shutdowns and startups. So this will really help you to um, reduce the emission peaks. Yeah? Usually you have, uh, during startup, uh, a catalyst which does not operate very well, until he reaches his operation temperatures, and then you have a emission peak which uh, yeah, needs to be justified or needs to be reduced usually, and with this you can start 10 degrees lower. This is really tremendous from my point of view. On the right hand side you see the catalyst types O for 115 and O for 116. These are cesium promoted and therefore the operation range starts quite early. Yeah. So for the standards, ring shape and star ring, you have 390 to 630. And for the uh, season type catalyst, uh, for, for the quattro shape catalyst, you have 375, yeah, which is, is much lower. This is really a step change. Yeah. And also for the OFO 116, we are working on a cesium, uh, on, a, on a quattro shape uh, solution which I hope will come in 2021. So, but as promised, I would like to talk a little bit more about the quattro shape catalyst. Here you see the advantages of the quattro shape catalyst in comparison to our standard star ring. Also the star ring catalysts, I would say, from, from competition. Yeah? So the geometric surface area of this type of catalyst 30% higher than the standard catalyst, which means yeah, you load the same volume of catalyst into the converter and you have 30% higher activity, which is a, a really um, big advantage. Then we have a pressure drop. Yeah, you need to justify a little bit on the pressure drop due to the, to the shape. So we have five to 10% higher pressure drop. But I have to say in our reference units, uh, on the global scale, our customers could not find a higher pressure drop because if you if you think um, you have 1.1 um, um, millibar, 1.1 uh, bar, and 10% um, higher would be 1. Point, um, yeah, two. You would not see it exactly due to the fact that the the measuring devices are not that accurate. Yeah, so. From that point of view, our reference units do not have any issues with pressure drop. Then, an additional 
advantage is the cutting hardness, which means uh, how hard is the catalyst. So it's 100% higher than the standard star ring. Star ring catalyst has a, uh, approximately uh, a cutting hardness of 70 to 80 newton meters. And with this catalyst, we have a hardness of 160 newton meters, which is tremendously high. You see here, the reason for this is this cross in the middle, which gives extra hardness. And this hardness relates to lower attrition. Yeah? So you have lower attrition, and this means you have a lower sieving loss if you do uh, your standard sieving in your, in your uh, plant. Yeah? So for example, usually you do a turnaround, and in bed number one or bed number two, you have a screening loss of just say a number 20%. With this catalyst, you will have less than 10% which saves you a lot of money. Yeah. So as I explained, so the commercial reference did not uh, show any increase in pressure drop, so the higher strength results to longer production lifetime. Yeah. So you can use this catalyst much longer than standard catalysts, and it's the strongest catalyst on the market with, with central holes. So, Let's take a deeper look into the attrition of the quattro catalyst. So why does the quattro catalyst have much better attrition properties? So if you look to these uh, uh, numbers, yeah, you see we have for the star ring the inner surface area of 12.3%. This is this here, and outer surface area is 87.7%. Um, for the quattro, we have more than 25%, so 27% inner surface area, only 73% outer surface area. So, um, so the points of the star is the highest likelihood to, for attrition. So if, if the um, unit is heated up and uh, cooled down, the bed shrinks and, and uh, extends, and this means uh, physical stress for the catalyst, and, and here you have it's very likely that these uh, points will be um, rounded up after after several months or years. Yeah? And in addition to the inherent lower attrition values, a higher portion of the surface area is protected inside the shape. Yeah? So you see, quadro is more round. You do not have that points which could be uh, rounded up already, and you have a protected inside of the shape. Yeah? So the predicted lower uh, loss of sieving is, is, is um, obvious, I would say, and um, you have a higher activity over time. So the activity loss is less than for a standard shape. Coming to our um, quattro sh first quattro shape reference. So we have one uh, customer in Germany, it's called Domo Kapoloina. They operate a two by one double absorption unit with a plant capacity of 850 metric tons and uh, oxygen to SO2 ratio of 0 0.9. Started up in September 2016 with a new quattro. We, they operated with uh, over 115 star ring in the beginning, and here are the, the figures. Uh, after two months in operation with these uh, SO2 oxygen concentrations and the ratio, they had approximately a capacity of 869 metric tons per day and a conversion rate of 99.81. Then we changed just one bed, only one bed, uh, from star ring to quattro, and did the same, so the SO2 concentration was even higher, so the, the ratio was a little bit disadvantaged for the quattro shaped catalyst, but nevertheless, we saw a capacity increase of almost 10% and also a higher conversion. And uh, our customer now operates this unit for more than three years with the quattro shape without any issues, and they're, they're very satisfied uh, using the quattro shape catalyst, and it's most likely that they will increase the 
the bed of uh, changing from star ring catalyst to quattro shape catalyst. So you see quattro, uh, the capacity increase is uh, really obvious, 8 to 10 percent with changing only one bed. The uh, quattro catalyst is capable to operate at even higher capacity, so this is also something. Uh, they, they were limited in the capacity. They saw that it should be possible to increase the capacity even further, but they were limited by the blower capacity of their unit. And also the conversion rate increased, and it's very stable over three years now. Okay, coming to some uh, case studies. Um, here you see one case which shows you how the catalyst works, the, the um, quattro catalyst should work um, if you use less catalyst volume and have the same performance. This is an example, a double absorption unit, three by one, 2,000 metric tons per day, 10% uh, SO2, 11% oxygen, conversion rate 99%. So the standard configuration would be the 0 for 110 starring in the first bed, 0 for 111 in bed number two and three, and the 0 for 115 in the last bed. The quattro shape, configuration would look like this, the same um, catalyst in bed number one, two, and three, but for bed number four, we would use over 115 in quattro shape, and here you could reduce the catalyst volume by 30%. Yeah, with less catalysts, you could reach the same conversion and the uh, same performance and the same um, capacity. So this means you would have here a lower pressure drop, less catalyst you need to, to purchase, and with a low pre lower pressure drop, you also can save some money on, on the blower uh, energy. Second uh, case study is, this is my advantage, uh, not, not my advantage, my, my favorite. So less catalyst uh, volume, same performance, oh no, sorry, uh, I was, was too fast. So this is the same performance and less catalyst now with our new catalyst types. So you can also use now in all beds the quattro shape because you have now the possibility, the, the advantage to use vanadium types as well. And in this case, you can reduce the catalyst volume in all beds by 30%. And which gives, this gives you really a tremendous lower pressure drop if you are limited in the pressure drop in, in this case. Yeah? You can um, save a lot of money on your blower consumption, yeah? energy consumption by the blower, and you can save money on invest by buying less catalyst. Yeah? Less invest and lower pressure drop. But now coming to the constant catalyst volume and higher capacity. So it's still the same example. 2,000 metric tons unit. Up to here, everything is equal. But in the last bed, we would have the quattro shape. And this is uh, as already shown for the Domo case, Domo Capolona case, we could increase, based on your operation conditions, the capacity by 6 to 10%. And if we do a calculation based on this 2,000 metric tons unit, yeah, you can do a capacity increase by roughly 140 metric tons per day, which means roughly 50,000 metric tons per year. On additional sulfuric acid, you can sell on the market. And this would lead to additional sulfuric acid sales of 1.5 million per year. So you see this higher invest for, for the quattro shape catalyst will definitely pay off after a short time period. And the last uh, configuration, also higher capacity, same catalyst volume, quattro in all beds. Yeah? This is a calculation. We do not have uh, reference units yet, but our assumption based on our simulations mean that we could increase the capacity by 250 metric tons, which means more than 80 uh, thousand metric tons 
of production per year, which could lead to roughly 2.8 million of additional sulfuric acid sales per year. 